The Kremlin has found itself in a very difficult position in the war against Ukraine. On the one hand, it is in dire need of cannon fodder, and on the other, a new wave of mobilization could result in the collapse of the regime. The famous Russian ultra-patriot Z propagandist Maxim Kalashnikov spoke about this dilemma in his blog. He drew attention to the fact that the Russian authorities have already increased the one-time payment to recruits by more than 2 million rubles, or about $21,000, at the official exchange rate. Despite this, there are fewer and fewer people willing to participate in the so-called special military operation. Meanwhile, the Russian armed forces have developed an acute shortage of manpower at the front due to huge losses. In the first month, the recruit is offered more than 3 million. Guest workers, migrants are welcomed, they are granted citizenship. Everything is flooded with money, loot. What does this mean? Any Western enemy intelligence officer will immediately conclude that there are simply not enough people, that the previous flow of contract soldiers is not enough. He will conclude about the level of losses, about the flow of those now wanting to sign a contract. And this is all a threat, Kalashnikov said. He is sure that the enemies are deliberately pushing the Kremlin to announce a new wave of mobilization in order to cause unrest in the Russian Federation and the collapse of the Putin regime. They are deliberately pushing our authorities towards mobilization, knowing that our authorities are very afraid of this, because they will have to call up a lot of people. This could cause turbulence, acute events in the country, said the Z propagandist. He is sure that Russia is not ready for a new wave of mobilization. The rear supply is not organized. The Ministry of Defense is in complete disorganization due to mass purges. Some experts argue that Vladimir Putin's refusal to withdraw troops from Ukraine and his decision to send poorly trained teenage conscripts to defend Kursk Oblast against a Ukrainian incursion reveals a stark shift in Russian military strategy. Conscripts were meant to serve only in non-combat roles in Russia. Military observers didn't notice large-scale redeployment from the occupied parts of Ukraine with only limited transfers noticed primarily from Ukraine's south. Meanwhile, the intensity of Russian ground assaults in eastern Ukrainian Donetsk Oblast does not decrease. Meanwhile, various sources reported the transfer of conscripts and preparations for such movements from multiple regions across Russia to Kursk Oblast. The Telegraph argues that this decision marks a departure from Putin's previous policy, which stated that conscripts would only serve in support roles within Russia. The decision to deploy conscripts in Kursk has even sparked limited protests, an uncommon event in authoritarian Russia. Forced to choose between the lives of unprepared young men and its ambitions for further gains in eastern Ukraine, the Kremlin chose those gains, the Telegraph wrote. So, Putin refuses to withdraw troops from Ukraine, sending poorly trained teenage conscripts to defend Kursk Oblast against the Ukrainian invasion. He uses poorly trained teenage conscripts like a cannon fodder. One person was killed and at least 14 tankers burnt as a strong blaze erupted in Parvez Khan border crossing on the Iran-Iraq border. A tanker driver was killed in the fire, and 17 others were injured, according to Rizgar Latif, the director of the Shahid Hazar Emergency Hospital in Kalar, Iraq. The fire was brought under control on Monday evening. At the parking area for tankers that transport fuel at the Parvez Khan border crossing, Several tankers burned after one of the tankers caught fire and exploded, Ibrahim Mohammed, the spokesperson for the Garmian Civil Defense, told media. Director General of Crisis Management of Iran's Kermanshah region said the fire on the Pervez Khan border on the Iraqi side was extinguished with the help of Iranian firefighters, including dispatch groups from Khazar Sharan. The fire of fuel tankers in the parking lot of the Parviskan border was related to the Iraqi side and had nothing to do with the territory of Iran and Kermanshah province. But we helped the Iraqi side to put out the fire, the official went on saying.